Hello community to the last days of summer. Let's talk about LLM quantization and the effect it has on your local LLM. So, you know, either you go to Olama and you see a beautiful open source model and you say, hey, that's great. And you download and you think you have the real model. Now, there are models that are distilled. And I'm not talking about distillation as you see here, because what we do, we take the reasoning traces of DeepSeq R1 and we transplant it to a QN3, an 8B model, and this is then a distillation. This is not what we are talking about. We are talking about if you go to DeepSeq R1, you want a real 671 billion model. Not distilled, not transplanted, but you see, you don't even get it. Because look at Olama, if you go here for the full 671 billion model, you see you already have a Q4, a quantization, 4-bit, 4K, a medium resolution. So you don't even get the real model. For this, you need a dedicated computer infrastructure or you go to the cloud. But if I download this here to my local PC, I have to go with a quantization. So how much does it hurt the performance here if I have this now on my local PC? Yeah, if you want to know this here, Gregory Gaganov, you know this Q4K. If you go to here, this GitHub, GGUF here, you see exactly the explanation. What does Q4K mean? The four-bit quantization, super blocks with eight blocks. Each block has reduced to weight, and the weight formula is now here, where you scale here for six bit and resulting here in a total of 4.5 bits per weight. And a lot of other, if you want, quantization. So the, what the scientists want to give you, they want to give you the best performance for the smallest models. And they give you options, depending on what you have available on your VRAM, what you are working with. Now, of course, you have also LM Studio. I know a lot of you work with LM Studio. So if you take a Cuban Suisse 235B, you have here the option, either you also go with a GGUF, as I just showed you, you click here, or if you work on Apple, you have an MLX, a 4-bit, 6-bit or an 8-bit quantization, depending on the memory that you have on machine. And what is really nice, LM Studio tells you, hey, when you download this model on your, let's say, Apple machine, LM Studio picks the source that will best suit your local Apple machine. So you get exactly here, let's say, the perfect fit for your Apple. Great. But now we have a new paper and this is something I personally wanted to do because I'm interested how much performance do I lose if I go with an 8-bit quantization or a 4-bit quantization. But you know, quantization are not that simple. And finally, we have here from Purdue University a new paper, August 22, 2025, Systematic Characterization of LLM Quantization, Performance, Energy and the Quality Perspective. Now, I will restrict myself. I will not talk about energy. I will not talk about the different performance issues if you implement it on an A100 or an H100 NVIDIA. I will not talk here. You need a little bit more energy. No, I'm only talking about performance. I say, listen, I have time. I don't care about energy, whatever variations. I want to see what is the performance of the model. So I only look at a very narrow performance result. The quantization methods are thousands. So what are the methods studied in this paper? Well, they're interesting for me. I use this locally on the machine. Now, in general, you have three quantization techniques. No, you have to weight only, only the weights are quantized into the lower bits. Then you have also the activation quantization, which is a more recent approach because it brings down, again, massively, it brings down the size if you only have 24 gigabytes of VRAM. Or you can go here, even the extreme step, and here a key value, cache compression here, in addition for more size reduction. But how much do we lose? Is this at all, again, the LLM that I was hoping for? Or what is it? Now we are going to look now at all three categories. At the weight-only quantization, at the weight and activation quantization, and then, step three, everything together with their key value, cache compression. Now, there are a lot of methodologies, a lot of research. I just ignore this. I think they did here the best what was available. There are a lot of programs. They do this automatically for you. If you are interested, interested in anything at all, I would tell you have a look at AWQ. 
This is here the paper AWQ from July 2024. You have it on GitHub. You have everything available for you. It is an activation aware weight quantization, a little bit more intelligence, but there are so many more recent methodologies you can apply. But now let's come to the main point. What we have for a quantization model. So if we see this, so we know that the weight tensor here has an 8-bit quantization. The activation has, goes with a full 16-bit. And we have here, an, not the floating point, but an integer representation at the end. Of course, you go here with a 4-bit weight quantization. If we activate now the quantization and we go from the 16 now to the first step is an 8-bit. So A8, A8, A8. You have now floating point, integer, or AWQ methodology. And if you go for the smallest possible model, plus you activate the key value cache compression, you see a key value 4, key value 8 with integer, key value 8 with integer, and all the different variations. So it gives you a broad spectrum of quantization. So let's have a look at this. What are the results? There are a lot of additional paper. Allow me just to give you the result. They built here a QMate and they explain exactly the methodology and they give you the code and everything, the database. I just want to give you what you lose. Now, the main sentence, maybe you're going to see this here in social media. Quantization can cause substantial quality degradation of your LLM up to 92% drop in the performance, like shown here on the human evaluation benchmark. And they operate here with a LAMA 13B LLM model. So this sounds horrible, but wait a minute, what kind of quantization? So whenever you see this, don't accept this, but have a look in detail because it is not as dark as you might think. And I will continue to lose Olama and LM Studio and the Quantize model, but you have to know what quantization to choose from. So let's talk about this. And this is a beautiful study. Here you have it. This is it. This is perfectly explaining everything. You might say, what? A Lama too? Yes, but never mind. This is a relative comparison. What we really compare it against is an FP16 performance. So whatever model you choose, and we will have three different sizes for a particular reason, and explain this in a second, we just have a relative comparison to the FP16. So you see, independent of what models you have, always compare to an FP16. So what is the pure effect of a quantization? Let's have a look at this now. Now, let's choose, let's start with the 13 billion free trainable parameter model, a LAMA 2, never mind, you can go with a LAMA 4 and I think there will be a better architecture and a better suited training performance, but in general, in a simplification, you will get here the same dimensions. So, you see, first column here is FP16. This is our benchmark against we compare everything else. And you guessed it, no? If it's dark or red and minus 92, this is you lose 92%. Full stop. No discussion about this. Compared to the same model on FP16. If you run it in the cloud or you have the infrastructure that you can run it on your local PC. So what is this? Now look, this is a W8A8 integer. So this means we moved here from an activation 16-bit encoding to an activation 8-bit encoding and an integer representation, not a floating point. So if you do this, you get for the human evaluation benchmark, let's have a look at this here, you get minus 92%. So in this case, only you get minus 92% drop in the performance. I say, okay, what else? What is the second verse? Just move here. This is also a way 8, so the weights are now 8-bit. And activation 8. And now we add the key value 8-bit quantization, also an integer. Now, this is interesting because I would have expected this, this two would have been swapped their places, no? Because here, I don't have a key value 8-bit quantization, but as it seems here, but Okay, minus 90% or minus 80%, it's not good. This is not what we want. Look at the third worst case. Here we have now a 4-bit weight quantization. Whatever you do, if you have a 4-bit weight quantization, you can have an A8 and a key value 8. You go with a non-integer. You go with the floating point representation. It says, yes, wow, 
yeah, but you see, the four bit weight quantization just drops the performance like hell. Not a good idea. And then the third was is here. This is now an interesting because you see, we are back here to the activation in a 16 bit quantization, so the real value, the real high precision. And then we go here with the weight also for a 4 bit quantization. So the last, this and the last one was the only one where we had a 4 bit quantization. And you see, it brings it down to minus 42%. So 4 bit weight quantization, even if you go with a full activation and you have here a key value 8 with integer, this is not a good combination at all. These are the worst combination, and this is why I highlighted this 4 here in red. So now you have a feeling that you say, okay, whenever you see this kind of quantization specification, don't touch it. Now, what about we have now for coding and beautiful and we go up the next size. We go to a 34 billion free trainable parameter LLM. Now it is different. You see the numbers exactly here. We go here with the human evaluation here. The numbers come down. It is not minus 90%. We are minus 35%. So the more the model size increases, the quantization is not as massively that it pushes down to minus 90%. But of course, the model is bigger. So if I download this now on my local PC, whatever platform I use, it is bigger. So the size is bigger and it will not fit on my GPU. But how much is it? And this is now interesting to see. You see, we have still our old three friends here and here our two old friends, but it's much less massive to drop. So what's now interesting is here a new one, really the last one, minus 34. So quite massive drop is now here. If I go with a weight for quantization and I add a four bit key value quantization. Okay, it says, Mal says, listen, buddy, eh? no way I'm going to give you the performance of the full FP16 model. There's no way you lose 34% of the performance in this simplest task. I'm not talking here about complex, but this I will explain in a moment. So on simple task, you lose 34% if you have a weight for quantization and a key value for quantization. Now let's go to the bigger model, a 70B model. Now, the same problem. No? You have a huge model, 70B, even if you do a quantization, it is still really big. So to have now this on a same size GPU, you would go have to go with a 2-bit quantization and you will find 2-bit quantized model of a 70B. But just note, look at the performance data. So 70B model, a huge model. You see, hmm, interesting. We see here not anymore in the red. Look, we're here in yellow or in orange or ochre or whatever you have. But it's not here as bad because the model size matters size matters. So smaller models are more vulnerable towards the quantization induced quality degradation. But this is not true in general, because look here at our classical two problematic fields here, minus 60%, minus 70% performance drop. And where is it? Again, if we go here, a weight 8 and an activation 8 bit quantization. So far away from anything with 4 bit integer, and a weight 8, activation 8, key value 8 bit quantization. Those are the worst performance indicators for this particular human evaluation benchmark on this particular 70B machine. But you see a pattern. No? Whenever you move away from an activation 16 bit to an activation 8 bit, something is going to happen. And if you go down to a key value 4 bit in addition, oh yeah. It's getting interesting. Is this a logic sequence? No, not at all. Because I would say that an 8-bit weight quantization with a key value 4 should be outperform, should we have less drop in the performance. But look, it isn't. Hmm. So how important is here if you go here with a floating point or an integer representation in the end? I can't give you any formula or any linear sequence dependence. This is model specific. 
Great. So in general, the authors tell us here, very short quality losses are smaller if you go with a simple question and answer or some very simple summarization task. So a small model can solve this. We work generally on a low complexity. But the moment you touch a higher complexity problem or you have anything to do with coding on mathematics here, yeah, no? you have severe losses for anything that is a kind of a challenging reasoning task. Of course, but you want to have challenging reasoning task for UI. So you have to go to bigger size models. This is a beautiful overview. Have a look for yourself. Read the paper. You have tons of additional performance data, but I just wanted to give you here the main insight here from this paper. And if you want, the simplest insight is here. This is the shortest visualization I found. FP16, yeah, that's the dream. No? We want to have the computer infrastructure for this, simply the VRAM for this. But it's also okay, you can go down even to an 8-bit quantization in the weight if you stay with a 16-bit activation quantization. And you even can go away from a floating point to an integer representation. Then there's this gray area where I say, okay, you still have an activation of 16, activation of 16, and then you can go down even with your key value quantization to an 8-bit. You, you might say minus 17%. You might say, okay. But then, this really hurts. Yeah? If you either go here with a 4-bit weight quantization or you go here with an integer output, even with an 8-bit weight and 8-bit activation and a key value 8-bit, it really hurts here. This does not fit together. Now, the easier your benchmark or your task is, you see here, the less the drop will be. But let's see, you really want to use the AI for some interesting stuff. No? You don't want for, hey, what is one plus one or how many R's are in BlackBerry or whatever. So... If you go to a little bit more challenging, you see how the quantization models crush down. They are destroyed. What it means for me. So whenever I encounter now a 4-bit quantization anywhere, I know exactly this is not at all the model that I think that I will get. So DeepSeq R1 FP16 is in no way at the same performance like a DeepSeq R1 that you can download from Olama or whatever. Because they are already quantized model, 4-bit quantized model with a specific block bit architecture. And there's a lot of research and the quantization, there's a lot of intelligence flowing into the future quantization methodology. So the quantization will get better and better in the next month, in the next half year. But you, if you have to reduce here the size of this model significantly, something has to give. And what's giving is simply the, if you want the intelligence or simply the performance, you do have a performance degradation. Because, like some members told me, hey, if you want to really run the full DeepSeq R1 model, you know, the 671 billion here in FP16, someone told me, hey, you really need a minimum of 1,350 gigabyte VRAM. So, <laughs> it is a complicated topic, but at least now I found for myself a kind of indication which quantized model to use and from which quantized model to stay away like hell because they will further crush my performance. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I've given you some guidance. You, maybe you found it interesting. Why not subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.